Chelsea Football Club apparently have rented a jet for Ruben Amorim to fly from Lisbon to London only for him to meet with West Ham. These reports are absolutely ludicrous, right? We're gonna have to get to the bottom of this because Chelsea, well, you know our heritage. We don't lease flights. We wait for other people to do it. Then we hijack the deal. Come on, Mudrik and more importantly, Willian. We've seen this done on numerous occasions. Thomas Tuchel wants a return to the Premier League. Are Chelsea interested? Then we've got Thiago Silva retiring. More information on Conor Gallagher exit from Chelsea. Yes, I'm calling it that. He is leaving Chelsea. A lot of people are going to be upset, but the news is coming out. And when the news is coming out at this rate, it's there's no smoke without fire. And finally, I think that we need to have a difficult conversation, an uncomfortable conversation, as the kids would say, about Mudrik and Noni Madueke. Which one of them is actually good enough for Chelsea? And what do we do with them this summer? Because the reality is, the numbers are looking bad for a certain somebody, and for the other one, well, the numbers are looking fantastic. Like, because if he does this over a bigger sample size, there might be a player in there. Let's get into it, let's break this down, and you will enjoy this video because you made it this far. Clearly, I've got your interest. So, hit the like button. We're aiming for a thousand likes on this video to end a fantastic month of April. Subscribe to the channel because we are en route and we're super close to 35,000. So, if you do it right now, I'd greatly appreciate it. And in the comments below, let me know. Do you want Thomas Tuchel, Ruben Amorim, or Pochettino to stay? Let's get into it. This is how I know I am assigned to whatever happens in Ruben, Ruben Amorim's career. Because the minute this news came out, I had nine notifications, nine, not this, nine, notifications on Twitter, straight away. People, oh my God, Alex, oh my God, seeing Kafkas, oh my God, oh my God. Yo, so it looks like reports in Portugal from a source called Pedro are coming out that Ruben Amorim visit on the 22nd of April, you know that whole time when he came across the standstead and I was having my meltdown, what a Joseph? doing? Why are we not hijacking this deal? It was not bought by West Ham. This was funded by Chelsea Football Club, allegedly. And Chelsea Football Club brought him here and he had secret meetings with Chelsea's board. And more importantly, he also met up with West Ham to make sure that he met the media narrative. Then, all the interesting stuff from here are coming out that Matt Law comes out rigorously denying. He says Chelsea are prohibitively or whatever he used, whatever word he used, I, I don't even know. He said they are saying they didn't pay for no flight. They are not denying meeting. They are denying paying for any flight. This is very interesting because what I am going to say is last week we had Pochettino come out with him. Pochettino came out and criticized the sporting directors. Pochettino criticized the owners. He actively said he has no faith, uh, that he's the only one taking the blame. I've been covering this. Like literally, I couldn't believe what he was saying. I even made a video where I said, this guy's trying to get sacked. Like you don't talk about your employee in that manner or employers in this case as an employee and expect to get away with it. Like, it is absolutely ludicrous, the stuff that he was saying. So now I'm gonna give you my two cents on the story. Do I believe this Pedro guy? I don't believe him, because it doesn't make sense, right? Why would Chelsea hire a flight for Ruben Amorim to come to meet them in secret, but then also have this whole public fiasco, oh, he's meeting West Ham, oh, he's doing this, so oh, he's doing that. What, just so that Ruben can use them to leverage a deal out of Liverpool? It doesn't make sense. The story made so much more sense from the outset when we thought Ruben used them, uh, West Ham to leverage Liverpool, and then what happens there, Amorim gets his move to Liverpool because Liverpool cave up under his demands, and we know what his demands are. 10 million up front, 10 million across three years. We know that. Uh, George Mendes is his agent. However, we know Chelsea are going to be looking for a new manager. We, we It's clear as day. Like Maurizio Pochettino will be having an end of year review. And if we don't get European football, as it looks like we're not going to, I do not see a world where he survives for next year. I don't, because if Maurizio Pochettino keeps his job, what kind of club have we become? What kind of institution have we become that finishing eighth and ninth after 12th last year is acceptable? I don't care how many injuries we've had. I don't care how young the squad is. The opportunity was there. Burnley, Sheffield, two draws back to back. Um, Brentford, Bournemouth. The number of points that we have dropped this year from unforgiven situations is unacceptable. And that's why I think he will lose his job. If they, in my head, 
It only makes sense that they would be interviewing Ruben Amorim. They've done it twice already. They highly rate him. He rejected them once, and the first time they opted to go for Potter. Idiots. Absolute idiots. Like, so for me, this absolutely makes sense logically, but not the way that it's coming out. Like, I don't believe they bought the flight. I genuinely don't. The next story is very interesting as well, because Sky Germany is reporting Thomas Tuchel is looking for a return to the Premier League. It is, like, vastly being reported that he's open to returning to Chelsea. And more importantly, Manchester United have held conversations with him. First of all, if Thomas Tuchel is available, we need to get him. Thomas Tuchel is the best manager Chelsea could get right now. Thomas Tuchel is one of the best managers in the world. Thomas Tuchel already has an affinity to Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel understands what it means to win at Chelsea. He's got a proven track record. Thomas Tuchel makes it to finals. Do I need to elaborate on why Thomas Tuchel is a fantastic manager for Chelsea Football Club? With Thomas Tuchel, there's a minimum standard you're going to reach, guaranteed. After that, you work, you give him the tools and he will get you to the next level. I trust Thomas Tuchel. People always ask me, right, Alex, you want Ruben Amorim? Yes, because I don't think Thomas Tuchel is available. Thomas Tuchel is our guy, right? He, he for me, is my favorite manager that has ever managed Chelsea since Jose Mourinho. And I love Jose Mourinho because he gave me memories that I'm never going to forget. However, right now, Jose is not that old Jose anymore. I just believe football's moved on to a different time and Jose hasn't evolved and that's perfectly fine. But Thomas Tuchel is still the guy. Bring him in if we can. If we get Amorim, I'm just as happy. You won't hear me complaining at all. But... If Thomas Tuchel's available, man, I'm telling you, Chelsea, do not let Manchester United get him. Especially if we don't get Amori. Do not let Manchester United get him, please. I want to give a quick round up to the fact that Thiago Silva has basically officially left Chelsea Football Club at the end of the season. He has come out and when I tell you, that was one of the most emotional videos I have ever seen for a player leaving a football club in four, like... He had four years with us, but it feels like he's been with us so much longer. He, the way he is integrated into the team, the way his family is integrated into the club, the way his wife and kids are just literally Chelsea fans through and through. You can tell. The, the wife goes and sits in the away end. She sits in the home fans. She sits every time. Like, she tweets about games, bro. Religiously. Like, this woman loves Chelsea Football Club. You can tell. And it's not, I think, because her husband plays for us. I think she's just integrated into the culture. And what I love about this is he sat there and said openly, I came for one year, I ended up staying four. And it's to the point where his kids play in the academy. He goes and watch the women games. He is our captain without the armband. And he's a Chelsea legend. A lot of people are going to say, no, he's not. For me, I loved the player before he came to Chelsea. And when he came to Chelsea, his reputation for me grew even more. He had offers in January to leave. And he said, no, I'm going to see the year out. I'm going to help this team. I'm going to do a lot for this team. He's been doing his coaching badges and Maurizio Pochettino has been allowing him to develop and do it, do it under, under the strict guidelines. And what I love about this is he literally epitomized what I want at Chelsea Football Club. People that care about the badge, but have technical quality and of leadership and are just world-class players. It is ridiculous that a 39-year-old in four years has done so much and highlighted that age doesn't matter, but yet the minute players turn 30, we're trying to throw him away. He gave us a Champions League, he gave us a Super Cup, and he gave us a Club World Cup. And more importantly, we made four other finals with him in that period. So we should have won more, but we didn't. So all I want to say is, Thiago Silva, thank you for everything you've done for this club. For me, you're top five Chelsea players I've ever seen. You're my favorites, right? Quality wise, I, I feel like an affiliation to the player. For me, he's just one of my favorites. A lot of people will disagree with me on that and they're going to start naming Czech, Terry, Lampard, Drogba and Hazard. I respect it. But for me, check slides out and I put um, uh, Thiago Silva in there. But that's just my opinion, man. Like, don't bite me. Don't shoot me. Sorry. The Conor Gallagher news is very interesting, right? Uh, so Alex Crook from uh, TalkSport is reporting now that Conor Gallagher is no closer to agreeing a new deal. And I think people need to accept what is coming. I believe Conor Gallagher was replaced long. And people won't like me saying that. I believe he was. I thought, I think when the club decided they're gonna get Moises Caicedo and Romeo Lavia, they said, okay, cool. Ruben's gone, Conor's going next year. These are the two players that are gonna replace him. And people won't like this. And they're gonna say, Alex, you're hating. I'm not hating. I just think the club's doing what they need to do to balance the books and, and making a decision for the long run. 
I think Conor Gallagher is a good player, but that's the best I think he is. And Alex Crook is right. Chelsea are looking for 50 million pounds, but if they get 40, they believe a deal could be done with add-ons included that could push it up to the 50 if Conor activates it. And for me, that is a phenomenal deal for Conor Gallagher. A lot of you are gonna say 60 million pounds, 70 million, that's what Kai Havertz was. Don't take this the wrong way. Mount has achieved way more than Conor Gallagher ever had, has or had in his career. And more importantly, Kai Havertz is a better player than Conor Gallagher, just purely based on talent level and what the ceiling of the player can be. Hence why the fees are at 70 million and 65, 60 million for those two. And the reality is that's in an inflated market. That was the peak inflated market where fees were being stupid at the time. So it makes sense that Chelsea could get 40 million pounds and just let Conor Gallagher go. I think Conor's gonna go somewhere, Spurs are linked, Newcastle linked, and gonna have a great career. I think he'll have a phenomenal career to the point where he's gonna have maybe 400, 500 Premier League appearances. People are gonna love him. People are gonna talk about him really high esteem, but that's his level. I don't think you win league titles with Conor Gallagher starting for you. I don't think you win league titles with Conor Gallagher playing uh, 25 to 30 games for you in a season. I think he's a good squad player at best. And if Chelsea get 40 to 50 million pounds, move him on, my opinion. Don't, don't bite the message. The next thing and the last thing that we need to talk about is the two wingers we have at the club. I think at this moment in time, we have got a big situation on our hands that we need to make a decision because we've got two players that are getting an awful lot of game time purely based on the fact that Christopher Nkunku and Raheem Sterling are injured and have been out for a significant part of the season. So we've seen a big sample of evidence from one year to suggest what the level of these two players are. Mikhailo Mudrik and Noni Madueke. One, in my opinion, statistically at least, has shown he might be of a level where he should come off the bench and grow into his role. The other, on the other hand, has shown that he's not of the level. And I'm gonna talk about Mikhailo Mudrik first because he's played 37 games this year. Mudrik has played 47 minutes per average on those 37 games. He scored six goals, a goal every uh, 291 minutes. That's a goal nearly every 3.25 games, right? So every three and a th uh, quarter games, he scores a goal. Is that good enough for Chelsea, considering the number of minutes he's played and number of opportunities he's got? Well, I think it's hard to say he's not good enough because we've seen glimpses, but we've also seen really bad lows. And we've also seen, more importantly, and I think this is the biggest part, failures of big magnitude. His inability to track back, his ability to switch off, his inability to think under pressure. I think he's a player that when he has no time, he's phenomenal, right? He just, he can do something out of the blue and he looks great. But when he's playing against deep blocks, he really struggles, he really does. And he's a player that doesn't understand his strength, which is weird for me because he has so much ability to run in behind, but he never uses it. He's got good vision, but he never uses it. He just wants to have a quick one to get that little highlight comp, or you know, like, Quick one, two, boom. Runs in behind, doesn't get the ball. If the ball's on the other side, he's not involved in the game at all. He's not interested in threatening him behind. He's not interested in becoming an avenue. And it's either a lack of coaching or the player's just not looking good. Because when you compare him to Noni Madueke, whilst I think Noni has got huge flaws in his game, right foot, non-existent, absolutely irritates me. Uh, sometimes hangs on to the ball for too long, sometimes isn't brave enough with his dribbles. I think there are times when I'm like, Noni, take him on and go down the outside. Refuses to do it. Everything needs to be on his left foot. However, look at the numbers. 29 appearances, 43 minutes per appearance on average. He's got seven goals and a goal every uh, 176 minutes. It's basically one in two. This guy's one in two and we're saying, get rid of him. And this is the part where I really need to understand why do we want to get rid of him? And more importantly, is this just a really skewed sample size? Because I see good in Noni. I think there's a player in Noni. I think we just need to coach that player out because we're seeing it in a small sample size already, right? So what if we keep him next year? and he comes off the bench, he plays cup games. Hopefully we get Conference League or Europa League where he can just be, explode onto the scene there. Like, integrate him slowly in. But there's gonna be a decision to make. Angelo, Mudri, uh, Noni, and uh, Omari Hutchinson, all four can't stay. And people will want to have faith and be given opportunities. But I wanna know your opinion. For me, if this summer, if we can get Mudrik off the books, do it. It's worth the risk, just sell it. Noni, 
I don't know. Do you want to loan him? Do you want to keep him? I am not sure. I need to give you get your insight. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Peace out. I'm out. Have a lovely day.